All right, thanks for joining me in this demonstration of SOLIDWORKS 2010. In this example, I'm going to cover creating parts from scratch in the context of an assembly. That's something we call assembly design or in-context design. And the application here is going to be uh, in how we can manually create a cable route. Uh, we will not be using the SOLIDWORKS routing module that's available in the premium. Instead, we'll be going through a manual procedure for folks who may not uh, have the routing module uh, installed. In this assembly, I've got a couple of ring terminals that are placed, and what I want to do is just define a cable that uh, will route between them. And that cable will be its own part file. Now, obviously, if we were to try to design that part in its own window, we wouldn't really know exactly what its shape or length or orientation would be. And this is exactly why we do an assembly-based or an in-context type design. To begin an in-context design, we will need to create a new part from scratch in the assembly. That's done from the Insert Components command. If we drop down the arrow here, we can choose the option to create a new part. When I choose New Part, SOLIDWORKS creates a new part at the assembly level, but it also changes my cursor to an arrow with a check mark. And if you'll notice the status bar down in the, the bottom left corner, it says select the face or plane on which to position the new part. So this is asking for a face or plane reference to attach this new part. Now I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the inside face of one of these ring terminals. When I do so, SOLIDWORKS creates the new part, and you'll notice it places me into edit sketch mode so I can begin sketching the geometry for this newly created part. Now one of the great things about in-context design is that it lets you create references to other pieces of geometry in your assembly. For example, in this cable route that we're about to build, we don't necessarily know without the assembly present, we don't know where the start or end of the cable will be, nor do we know its path, and we also don't necessarily know its size and location. So what we can do in the sketch mode here is I can just grab the internal edge of my ring terminal and use the convert entities command in the sketch mode. The convert entities command essentially copies that selected edge into my sketch. And you'll notice that it's black, meaning it's fully defined. I do not have to use dimensions to size or to relate the, the uh, size, shape, or position of that sketch. It is inherently given by the size of the, the part we copied from. So we're creating a relationship to the ring terminal, both in the placement and the size, when we create this sketch. Now, the wire that we're going to create will be a sweep feature. So we're going to need to define a path. In fact, it's going to be a 3D path from the first ring terminal over to the second ring terminal. So we'll be using a sweep feature for that. Sweep features, as you know, require at least two sketches. So this first sketch will be our profile sketch. That's going to be the shape of the wire. And that's all that I need to sketch at this time. So I'm going to exit the sketch mode. You'll notice in my feature manager tree, SOLIDWORKS has created our new part, and it's created a sketch. That's the sketch that we just created for our profile. Now the next thing that we'll want to do is define our 3D path to get from Ring Terminal 1 to Ring Terminal 2. My recommendation is that we use a 3D sketch for that. You know, if you haven't used the 3D sketch command before, it's found under the Sketch Toolbar. If you drop down the arrow, you can choose 3D Sketch. If you haven't had experience with this, though, I would recommend that you look at the SOLIDWORKS tutorial on the 3D Sketcher so that you can get a feel for how to use the Sketcher. We can draw lines, circles, splines, but the difference here in a 3D sketch is that we do not have to use a reference plane to orient our sketch. Now what I'm going to do here is start with a short straight line segment that comes out from the center of our ring terminal. Now since you're sketching in 3D, you don't really have as much control over the placement uh, as, as you do in a 2D sketch. So I'm just going to drag this line out arbitrarily for the time being, and then I will control select my line and the cylinder of the ring terminal and make a concentric relationship. This little straight segment might be considered like a wire stub. It's a straight piece that we want to come out before uh, the, the path turns into a true spline. Now I'll do the same thing over on the other ring terminal. I'm still in my 3D sketch, so I'll just hover over this circular edge. That shows me where the center is. Drag out a line, control select the line and the cylinder, and make them concentric. So now I have two straight segments that I can now connect with a spline. 
I'll use my spline tool in the sketch mode and I will just click and drag from one endpoint to the other creating a two-point spline. I can now click on this spline and using the spline drag handles I can begin to shape and, uh, and smooth out the path of this spline. Furthermore, if I want to, to force a relationship such as a tangency relationship, that's just a sketch relationship, so I will control select and add a tangency. And the same with the other end. Control select and add a tangent relationship. And now I've got a nice spline path from, from ring terminal 1 to ring terminal 2. Now since this is a spline sketch entity, I can modify it, I can drag it, I can add dimensions, I can uh, add other sketch relationships perhaps if I needed to route it through clips or route it around other geometry. For the time being, this looks good. I will go ahead and accept that sketch and edit the sketch or exit the sketch mode. Now that we have our two sketches, one for the profile and one for the path, I'm now ready to create my boss extrude. So from the features toolbar, I'll choose not boss extrude but sweep extrude, uh, a sweep boss. The profile sketch will be our circular sketch that we drew, that we copied from the, the diameter of the ring terminal. The second sketch will be our path sketch. You can see a nice preview shows up there and I'll OK that command. And there we can see our, n our newly created wire and if I expand my feature manager tree you can see that now we have the sweep feature that is part of this newly created part. Now once you're done editing or adding features to your newly created part we need to exit out of the edit part mode back into the assembly mode. This is an important thing to recognize when you're doing in-context design, is the difference between editing part versus editing assembly. I'm editing a part currently, so any new features that I add will belong only to this wire. But once I'm done and ready to return back to the assembly edit mode, maybe to add mates or to do interference detection, those assembly related functions, I need to get out of assembly mode or out of edit part mode, and I do so by clicking the edit component command on the command manager or by clicking the edit component command in the graphics area. Now I've returned to the edit assembly mode. You can see that the, the newly created part no longer shows in red because it's no longer being edited. And we now have a new part created from scratch in the assembly. If you need to open up this part in its own window, you can do so. And there is our newly created wire. And I want you to notice in the feature manager tree, notice that for our sweep one feature, we now see an arrow next to that feature and this arrow indicates that this feature was designed in the context of an assembly. So it is an external reference to that assembly. The importance of that is if for any reason our assembly were to change, maybe the position of the components were to change, uh, the sizes were to change, then this wire is automatically going to update when the positions of those ring terminals move. And that's the benefit of designing in the context of an assembly.